Hello and welcome back to Dragon Roll TV. My name is Demix and this is Total War Warhammer 2 and we are playing as the Karak Kadrin led by Ungrim Ironfist. Uh, first of all, I just want to remedy something before I forget because I've been forgetting for ages. I need to retax my capital thanks to Druki or Death in the comments last time for that. Um, that's really going to affect my income there brings it up to about double what it was. Uh, so last time we had just finished our war with the orcs and uh, have begun liberating the Dawi who have been enslaved from the vampires uh, in Zufbar and we are trying to unite the province of Zufbar by taking Karag Dromar, that is the plan. However, uh, before we do that and head out into the vampire lands and start taking, taking it back from this undead blight that has infested this land, uh, we will try to upgrade our economic power and also finish this army because it's not quite there yet. So let's do that first. Let's finish him off. So let's give him um, another warrior, uh, another longbeard, and another quarreler. Meanwhile, Ungrim, I'm going to keep him in Oakenhammer. My reasoning behind this is, if, is that they can't attack Zufbar instantly, so he'll get one turn to then come around and liberate it if, if need be. So we'll leave him in Oakenhammer, which would otherwise be completely defenseless. Over at Karak Kadrim, nothing to report here. And Karak Ungor, we can build here. Let's see what we can build. I think we'll go for a trinket maker. I just want this area to be an absolute economic powerhouse because it's very safe. It's got Kiss left to the West, who are big fans of ours. <coughs> potentially even trading partners. Yes, they're trading partners, so that's good. Let's see if there's anyone else we could trade with. Talabak land. Trade agreement. We do approach his friend. But they have rejected us. Fair enough. Okay. Got some trust building to do for them before they'll give us their give us their custom. Uh, okay, over here we have Kun Gunnison. He's returning from his quest to move to Wisemund. Uh, and he is slowly making his way back. So, not going to do much this turn, just going to pass my turn here, and then... Oh, we have another guy here, Garam Deanson. Let's have him try and assassinate Ruprecht Haupt Anderson. And he failed to do that, that's okay. We'll upgrade his wound capability. And we also have a technology as well, that's very good. Let's uh, give militia training to our dwarf warriors and miners. That seems like a good idea, we've got lots of them. And we'll pass our turn there. What are these vampires up to? Moving away from Castle Drakenhof, that's encouraging. They're trying to move to protect Waldenhof, it's not going to save them. Okay, I'm going to start editing out um, parts of when I end turn, just to speed the, the videos up a little bit, because they're quite long-winded and there's no need for you, the viewer, to suffer through uh, non-activity while the game loads. So I'll start editing them out for you from now on. Let me know if you'd like me to stop that, though. Some people don't like it, so let me see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, assault Garrison success on Oakenhammer. Let's try to get some revenge for that. Well done. Wooden success. Good stuff. Well done, Deanson. Uh, Ungram Iron Fist is currently 19 out of 20. Let's just get that 20 out of 20 army first before we do anything else. Uh, and he only has four quarrelers, so I'd like to give him one last quarreler, to be honest. Meanwhile, Glumbugman is ready to ready to move. Let's give him Rip Marcher. And let's move him just next to the enemy territory so he's not taking attrition and we'll attack Walden off next turn, which should be a relatively easy target. Pass our go there. Kun Gunnison is going to keep on moving up. And the vampires here reorganizing. They know the threat's incoming. But it won't save them. Okay. What can we do this turn? Let's continue with our plan. Let's move to take Walden off. I think this is easily winnable, so let's do it. Uh, 
Let's get a nice long front line backed up by a beautiful line of archers. Very traditional. And let's put our archers in front first. Let's have it like that so that they get that early volley fire. Break their lines a little bit before they come upon us. The Dawi are ready. Take them off guard mode. We'll just keep these guys in the flanks here from getting, uh, from letting these wolves get behind us. We'll move these archers to defend our flanks as well, but they need to move back a bit. Get our Lord engaged there. Make sure these guys don't flank around, we'll just catch them there. Bats are currently trying to swarm. Bats are currently trying to swarm around our ranged units. Gotta try and stop that from happening. Right flank has held well. Let's target these Grave Guard now. Kill these zombies on the flanks. Get these guys to flank round like that. Finish off these bats. And our right flank is holding very strong. Legendary zombie unit here, the Tithe. Hella strong meat shield unit. Brother Dwarves fighting on strong. Dowie putting up a strong fight. There's the Dwarf Lord. In with in with his men, fighting the Grave Guard. Let's check on our rest of our units. One of the vampires is broken through. We're losing this left flank. Let's back our archers off and try and help it with the rest of them because the right flank has all but crumbled for the enemies. We'll leave our, we'll leave their lord to uh, chase down our archers. We're not really bothered about that. Warriors. 
Enemy Lord has caught a group of ranged Taui. And he'll make short work of them. Tougher than most ranged units, but not tough enough, I don't think. We better send someone over to help. And that's done it. Sending all our archers over to support and killing the general has ended the battle and brought victory to the Karak Kadrin. Good stuff. Strong victory there. Not too many losses. And surprising amount of kills for the, the Longbeards. 152. You don't often see them racking up that many kills, but I guess they were against zombie units. Which would explain their high kill count. Kazoo, Kazoo, Kazoo. Ha! Good victory. Let's take this settlement for ourselves. For the Dowie. We don't often take lands like these, but I think in this case we should make an exception. Let's encourage growth in these lands. Try and bring things back from the dead. And untainted seems to be a good choice for this dwarf, given his location. Meanwhile, Ungramar and Fist. He's one more turn until he's got a full retinue of troops. So we'll give him that turn and in the meantime upgrade something. I don't think we'll upgrade Oakenhammer though. I think it will be Kazadurkalaz again. There it is. And we have Garam Deansen able to do something. We'll have him scout for us. We'll just position him here. That looks good to me. I just realized I've made a mistake. Sorry, it's, I've been a while since I played the campaign. That position in his army is for this runesmith, who will join him on the next turn. So we'll move Garim back to near Ingram, near enough so that we can siege Castle Drakenhof. So that will happen next turn. Okay, let's see what happens on turn 44. Technology research. We've increased our melee attack and defense for our dwarves. That is good news. Let's see what else we can do. Let's do that. Weapon strength for dwarf units. And we'll have Ungram move up to here. We'll have our runesmith join him. And we'll have him siege Castle Drakenhof. And we'll start building some stuff to enable us to siege the uh, the castle, which should be a fantastic fight. We'll continue that siege there. Meanwhile, let's see what Glum Bugman's doing. Not much. Probably healing after that last fight, but we kind of need him to keep moving. So what we'll do is we will... Move him to take Eshin, which is very well defended, actually. It may even have a gate. It does have a gate, so it has walls as well, so we're going to have to actually fight that as a siege. So we might give it another turn. Not sure. I decided not to give it another turn, guys. I want to, uh, to siege them out, especially since they've got four units of cavalry, and uh, yep, yeah, it shouldn't be too difficult to siege, so we'll do that. Continue the siege. And let's upgrade Zufbar. That seems like a wise thing to do. And pass our turn there. Cun Gunnison keeps running. What does he want? A defensive alliance. That definitely seems good. 
strength rank 7 and we're strength rank 8. Together, we're probably very high in the strength ranking. And they are sallying out to fight us. Okay. Okay, what we'll do here, I think, is... Get a line of our dwarves as usual and try and use our slayers to flank as usual. So we'll have our slayers here on the left flank. We'll actually have... We'll, we'll split our slayers today. We'll have slayers on the left and right flank. That way, no matter where their cavalry are, we should be okay for that. And then we'll have Ungrim and our Runesmith right there in the middle. Let's do it. Now, it would be good to defeat this first army before they get reinforcements. That would be very good for us. So let's try and do that. Let's have all our Dewey Marksmen. Indeed, let's have them try and take out this Master Necromancer. And let's engage them. Our range doing a good job of damaging their lord. Meanwhile, we'll get Ungrim over to hit their lord. It doesn't look like we're going to get to hit him, so we'll hit this one instead. Look at that. One hit really, really hurting this lord over here. And we killed that lord. Let's bring these slayers in to combat. Because the slayers will kill these guys because they're monsters and slayers are good against them. Bring our other slayers across here. This is a very advantageous fight for the slayers. And our ranged units are just getting to absolutely massacre these flying units. They're trying to run away, probably wise. Not quick enough though, many of them being taken down. Meanwhile, our slayers are, in are engaged in combat with all their big units, which is excellent for us. There is no upside to them having their Vargeists or their cavalry engaged with our slayers. Very good for us. We'll keep pushing these slayers around the left-hand side flank. And we'll get our warriors to line back up into some semblance of a line. Ranged move up. This battle is going very well so far, although our Slayers have got themselves a bit over engaged. Let's pull them back. Black Knights, another good fight for our Slayers. Definitely want to take that fight. They will annihilate a lot of these Black Knights. Let's have our infantry move forward and engage. Let's try and get Ungrim to take out another enemy lord. That's what he's good at. That's what he's built for. And the less lords the vampires have, the less morale they have. Same for anyone, but it affects them double because it actually damages their units. It doesn't just make them flee. Let's see if he can get through here. He is almost through. Come on, Ungrim. You can do it. You can get out of there. 
Well, he's still got the charge bonus. Let's see how hard he can hit this woman. Wow. I don't usually like it when people hit women, but that was good. <laughs> this necromancer's crumbling here. Our giant slayers, they are falling, but they are doing well in that engagement, so we're going to leave them there. As long as they don't get finished off, they'll be fine. And we'll actually try to get some ranged units firing on that that uh, throng there as well to help them with it. Looks like we've taken out that lord. So let's get uh, Ungram back into the thick of it. I'm going to retreat my giant slayers from them because they won't retreat and I'd like uh, to have that unit still later on. So if we retreat them, they should survive. <coughs> Meanwhile, our archers are not firing, so let's have them fire on something. They're doing an all around good job of wiping out what remains of them. Our slayers can charge into these black knights, try and finish them off. But they are deciding they don't want that engagement and running away. Nope, they keep changing their mind. They hit us hard, but we should be able to cut down a few of them once we're engaged in the combat. Although we lost loads of them in that very, very short window there. From 21 to 10. That hurt them more than I thought it would. And that, there it goes. They're all crumbling. And that's the victory. Pyrrhic victory, but a victory nonetheless. Hopefully no units actually lost. Our slayers very badly hurt. Those brave slayers... Every single one of them fighting on to the end to fulfill their Slayer Oaths. Good news is we didn't lose any of our units there in that engagement, so uh, we will get everything back. And let's occupy without damaging the settlement, because it's already worth a lot. 23,000 if we sacked it, but I'd rather take it because it has gold, and hopefully we don't damage it too much by occupying it. And straight into another engagement. They're attacking, they're sailing out of both cities, which is really good for us. Actually, it's not. It's not good for us. <laughs> it's not good for us at all. We'd prefer the uh, the siege battle, I think, because we have entirely infantry and they have cavalry, which benefits us, really. In open grounds, they have the advantage. So let's see how we do. Okay, very simple tactic again. One line, archers, and infantry. Let's see how we get on. Move our archers over to the right and try to take out some of this uh, flanking unit because they're really trying to have a flanking position and we'll move our infantry are actually going to back off here a little bit and try and form a line to defend against this flank that they're so obviously trying to do we'll leave our lord out there as bait if nothing else fine with that And if they're going to do that, let's send our, let's have all our range just take these crypt, crypt horrors out as quickly as possible. Look at that. They're sent, committing their crypt horrors without any protection at all. Just instantly wipe them out. And that's a really, really powerful win there for the Dowie. 
just completely annihilated a full unit there. We'll target these great weapon infantry now as well. We'll keep these infantry moving back just to make sure that we don't get flanked. And try and take out these great sword infantry because they don't have shields so hopefully our range will be more effective against them. Meanwhile let's turn our attention over here to the continuing continuing flanking units of the undead. Let's engage as soon as we get engaged. Let's get our infantry here. It's a powerful charge there. Try and get our infantry, try and get our ranged units to take out as many high value units as possible, like those Vargeists, which are just getting melted by the ranged fire. Almost all of them dead instantly. And there they go, they've crumbled as well. Very strong start. Let's try and attack one Black Knight's unit at a time. Let's not take that engagement. We'll try instead to get our warrior units to engage them. While our ranged units work on taking down these Black Knights one at a time. They continue to not commit their knights over here. But they are being very pesky with their bat units. And here we go, this is not so good. They are doing a good job with uh, harassing us with their cavalry there. Also, our leader is now really stuck in this engagement over here. Uh, I thought I would be much faster at bringing down their grave guard with great weapons that he got caught in. Let's see if we can get him out of there, if we can. We'll move him through the Crypt Ghouls back into our line. And we're getting attacked on this side now as well. On the plus side, we've nearly routed those Black Knights. And that's another high value unit gone. And we are getting our Lord out of there, which is good. Our line is holding for now, but it won't hold for long. So we really need a result from these archers. Who are doing a great job at hitting these knights. But they need to kill them quicker. We need to get rid of this cavalry as quickly as possible. We got another unit gone. Let's see if we can wipe out this one. Let's try and get rid of this last unit of bats here that are just causing us all sorts of trouble without actually doing any damage. Engage there. Once this unit of bats is gone, hopefully we'll have free range with our with our range units at last to then support our melee our melee infantry. We're going to use our ranged units now to try and take out Berend von Waldenhof, who is doing a good job of disrupting them. But if we can take out their general, she's kind of exposed here. If we can take her out, <coughs> that would go a long way to winning this battle, which is currently still in anybody's hands, really. 
Our general had been running away, but he has he has rallied, but now has seven black knights to deal with. Hopefully he can deal with that on his own, because he's not going to be getting any help from where he is. And here goes Berend. When she dies, it could be the victory for us. It's a big deal when the vampires lose their lord. And there she goes. Certainly helped with those black knights who have now completely crumbled. <coughs> and we'll bring our dwarf lord back into the action. Over here we have great guard with great weapons. Grave guard with great weapons who are not facing the correct way. So we're going to shoot them in the back. And hopefully this is, this is going to annihilate them very quickly. No shields and being shot in the back. Massive damage bonus for the uh, our archers there. And as we thought, just getting absolutely annihilated in no time at all. So we'll send these units over here to support this engagement. And these warriors can support this one here. And it's looking like we're going to win this now quite comfortably. And there we are, the crumbling has started and I think we've won that engagement. Did look close for a while there, but uh, luckily Dwarven Resolve pulled through. Some good good play by our archers to, uh, to kill the enemy lord and uh, to deal with the cavalry that was all over them, as well as the fell bats, really harassing them in the back lines, but they, uh, they managed to spread out and support each other and win the day. And that means Karak Kadrin victories on both ends of the vampire lands. And they're really suffering now. Well, occupation. Okay, province secured, Eastern Sylvania. They did our work for us. Selling out from both their fortified positions and uh, being defeated in both engagements. And has that has given us Eastern Sylvania in its entirely, entirety. And I think uh, all that remains is Castle Templehof for the Vampire Counts. And they're being pushed in on from the west as well by the Empire. So not good news for them at all. We've also had a grudge issued against Isabella von Karstein because she is trespassing in our lands. Trade gained for public order for Glum Bugman and positive growth. We also killed Eric Haupt Anderson in combat as well as Wendelin von Falkenstein and many others. <laughs> Red Axe of Carrick Eight Peaks. A good weapon there gained and an untainted buff. Lots going on there at the end of that turn. And he's already equipped his weapon. Good stuff. We'll give him armor too. I am the Slayer King. And we will upgrade our runesmith here to give him Rune of Fury. And round out his, uh, his talents there. Okay, and that's where we're going to end this video, guys. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please click the like button below. And uh, subscribe for more content. And we will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. See you later.